This video will cover the construction of my second pontoon, focusing primarily on the differences in the nose cone construction. I wasn't really happy with the process I used to shape the nose cone of my first pontoon, as it required a lot of bondo work and sanding to get it to the smooth shape I wanted. For my second pontoon, the foam board skeleton is the same, but I used semi-rigid foam to shape the nose cone. These are just snap together foam play mats, slightly thinner than your standard garage floor mat. They hold a convex compound curve well enough to shape the fiberglass while wet, although I'm not relying upon the foam to add any real strength. I feathered the foam into the main cylinder with a razor knife and smoothed the transition with Bondo and sanding. If you can source a single sheet of foam large enough to cover the entire nose cone, that would probably be optimal, but if you need to join a few pieces together to fit, i found that Bondo does a good job of tying everything together and smoothing out the joint. Although working with epoxy does not require a respirator if you are in a well-ventilated space, Bondo or other urethane or polyester resin-based products definitely do require a VOC-rated respirator. One of the reasons this project has taken so long is that purchasing any type of particle or VOC respirators for non-medical use was difficult for about eight months due to COVID-19. Attempts to build my own positive pressure respirator using available materials had less than optimal results. I'm going to be building up the fiberglass chop strand mat on the bottom part of the nose cone first, and I will trim the foam and the fiberglass at the same time when I'm ready to work on the other side. As the foam is in a compound curve, I've had to make several cuts in the chop strand mat to make it lay mostly flat. Okay, this is dried for 24 hours. Um, you can see there's a couple of places with little slight wrinkles there, especially in here. Um, that's because I'm using chop strand mat and it doesn't, um, the binder doesn't fully release with the epoxy resin. You can see some places where there's visible stranding on the top here, and there's other places where there's resin coating that is completely smooth. Um, so I'm going to be sanding this down a bit to knock down the high points and if there's any strands sticking up, it'll take those off and any place where the epoxy is super smooth is going to knock that down and give it a rough texture so that the next layer will adhere to it pretty well. So you can see the high spots like here and there. The dust collects in the low spots. You can see here where it used to be completely smooth, now we have the individual strands that were high have been turned kind of a whitish color, but there's still glossy clear areas between that. So I'm going to be sanding this until I get most of it looking, you know, something more like this, where there's not as many glossy areas in between them. After putting chop strand mat on the cylindrical part of the pontoon, I generally just do a single light sanding pass to knock down any fibers that are sticking out and to scuff the surface of the epoxy to get it ready for the next layer of chop strand mat or the final woven fiberglass cloth layer. However, the nose cone has compound curves, so the chop strand mat will sometimes have small wrinkles, which require a more intensive bit of sanding to level things out, seen here. I wear a P100 respirator when sanding or vacuuming fiberglass. The vacuuming step removes all of the excess fiberglass dust from any depressions in the surface. So you can see areas that used to be raised ridges, some of which cut all the way through into the back of the ridge there. For example, up here and like here. But that's okay because we want it to be mostly level and the next layer of fiberglass will cover all that up. To give you just a feeling for the rigidity of fiberglass, this is two ounces per square foot chop strand mat with a liberal amount of resin on it, epoxy resin, and behind it is the foam that I use, so there's, you know, support there and there, but here where there's no supports behind it, you know, I can visibly flex that in by pushing with my thumb, but it's, you know, it's pretty stiff stuff, and it's pretty, it's flexible, it's not cracking or anything when I do that, but it will take a couple of layers here to get full rigidity here. Now, the part where I have the 
styrofoam float with this material covering the top of it, um, you know, that stuff is pretty solid um, right there. That's not going anywhere just because I can't push into this here. So it's really rigidity and, and um, kind of protection at that point. Um, so I'm probably only going to do two layers. I'll, I have this guy going from the bottom all the way up to here. I'll do another one from the bottom edge of that all the way over. So I'll get two layers on the part here that's likely to actually touch ground, and then one layer on those sides that are mostly, for the most part, above the waterline. Um, and then, of course, I'll be putting another fiberglass cloth on top of that. But on the nose cone here, because I'm going to be supporting people's weights standing on, this is upside down, so standing there, um, I'm going to be putting three or four more layers up here, and then a lot of layers on the underside, which will be the top when I flip it over. To build up the strength I want for the nose cone, I'm laying up multiple layers of chop strand mat in a single operation. I've pre-cut all the pieces and lay them out one over the other, building up multiple layers so that I don't need to wait for the epoxy to dry and sand between the layers. As I'm using slow hardener for my resin, um, this is a relatively small area, I easily have enough time to do multiple layers. I'm using multiple smaller pieces near the tip of the nose cone where the curve is more compound to avoid wrinkles. You could get better results with an epoxy compatible chop strand mat or woven fiberglass cloth which conforms to curves nicely. I do have woven fiberglass cloth I will use for the final layer of the pontoon, but chop strand mat is hard to beat for cost and the ability to build up thick layers quickly. You'll probably want to buy a gallon of acetone to clean the epoxy resin off of any tools you use before it dries. If you have a second container to store the contaminated acetone, you can reuse the epoxy acetone solution a few times as it just needs to have less epoxy resin than your tool. All right, this has two layers of two ounce per square foot fiberglass mat. And it barely barely deflects there. I have three layers up here, but there's also some other things up there, and it is significantly harder. As this video is mostly about the nose cone, I'm not showing a lot of the details about the chop strand mat I put on the cylindrical part of the pontoon. But basically I did one sheet on each side, and they overlap to make two layers in the middle or the bottom part of the pontoon. I alternate nose cone layers and pontoon layers so that the overlapping areas are feathered together and also overlapping. After the pontoon has two layers and I have two to three layers of layup on the nose cone, I cut a second full sheet of chop strand mat and trimmed it to lay as flat as possible over the compound curve. I fiberglass this down before calling in an assistant to flip the pontoon over to work on the top. You can see here how I extended the foam and the fiberglass well past the actual top surface, so I didn't need to be terribly careful about the bottom edge. All of this needs to be cut off flush. I find that an oscillating cutoff tool is perfect for this job. I used a drywall disc for most of the work, combined with a one inch square plunge cutter for detail work near the edges. Expect your blades to dull faster when cutting fiberglass than wood. Notice that I'm cutting at a slight downward angle from the foam that will shape the top surface. While I had the oscillating cutter out, I also cut away the smaller overlaps from the edges of the pontoon itself. I cut out more chop strand mat for the nose cone. Notice the multiple feathered cuts around the edge which will allow it to wrap around the edge of the bottom piece. My normal procedure is to paint epoxy onto the foam first to make sure that the foam is fully coated and that the fibers on the very bottom press against the foam will get enough resin. Then I liberally apply resin to the top of the chop strand mat and use a plastic spatulas and fiberglass roller tool to make sure it gets distributed throughout the entire chop strand mat and into all of the fibers. Chop strand mat uses a lot more epoxy than woven fiberglass, so I'm mixing multiple batches as I go. 
I use a chip brush to gradually work my way around the edges, getting more and more epoxy resin on the cut tabs while trying to keep as much as possible from falling onto the drop cloths on the floor. Once the fibers in the mat are fully wetted out, they bend and can be stuck to the bottom part of the pontoon. You know you have enough epoxy on them once they hold their shape and stay in place. The gap between the front and top surfaces is not a straight line, so I have to cut the mat to allow it to lay flat. To cover and join this cut, I have a thin piece of woven fiberglass tape that I wet out and lay over the two pieces. I use glass bead micro balloon epoxy paste to fill in lots of holes and fillet the sharp edge at this stage, so check out my mini video on that topic to get more details. At 11 feet 9 inches, this is the longest single piece of chop strand mat that I lay down on a pontoon. All right, I laid this out as a single piece, but I'm actually going to be putting the back edge and the top arm separately from this front cover. This front cover is going to be on top of a few extra pieces I'm going to put down here. I want a few extra layers here to support people stepping down onto a beach. So instead of cutting this nice and evenly, I am going to be ripping it to have a frayed edge deliberately so that I can blend those edges back in a little bit better. All right, these are some scrap pieces I cut to shape, just, you know, so they'll mostly fit together. Um, it's going to be an extra one and a half, kind of an extra layer here on top, two layers there. Um, just going to reinforce this top step area a little more. After laying up several more layers on the nose cone, I flipped the entire pontoon over again and had to cut off a few pieces of the wraparound that didn't fully bond. After sanding, I'm using a 10% by weight micro balloon glass bead and epoxy mixture to skim coat the chop strand matte nose cone and smooth things out to get ready for the final woven fiberglass cloth layer. I'm using a thin woven e fiberglass as my last layer of fiberglass before my gel coat that's against the water. Um, so this stuff flows around compound curves you know, a lot nicer than chop strand mat does. It required essentially just one cut here to change over from the cylindrical shape to the kind of conical nose cone and let this stuff here overlap. You can see it's, you know, it's sliding back and overlapping. Without that cut, it would have had a big wrinkle here. Uh, but with that cut, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to smooth that all down once I put the epoxy on. Um, and so this will add a little more strength, but mostly it's a nice smooth layer that will pick up some of the waves and dips from below it, but will work a little bit to smooth that out. You can see that the woven fiberglass cloth goes almost transparent once the epoxy is applied. This is the type of fiberglass you would use over a cedar strip canoe to show off the wood underneath. I'm using it as a final layer that will be covered by the polyester resin gel coat. All right, an hour or two after fiberglassing this thing, you can come through and cut the excess off quite close. So if you've been watching, you can see that my woven fiberglass cloth comes down to about here. And I have chop strand mat up here, and this is a double layer of chop strand mat where it's folded over from the top. So this is obviously less smooth than this guy here, um, but I'm not too worried about that because this is going to be above the water line. So I'm really focusing sanding efforts on this bit here, which is going to be below the water line. The pontoon needs a final sanding step to smooth it out as much as possible before putting on a gel coat. I sanded with a coarse grit sandpaper, blew the excess dust off, and then sanded with a finer sandpaper before doing a final vacuum to remove all of the excess dust. I haven't been terribly happy with the polyester resin gel coat I've been using. If I were to do this project again, I'd try harder to find an epoxy gel coat to use, as the polyester resin gel coat absolutely requires the use of a VOC respirator, as well as an extremely well-ventilated workspace that is not near your house. 
I've made a video about the issues I've had with too slow or too fast curing times. You can check that out if you care. As this pontoon boat will live in a lake, I'm using black bottom shield anti-fouling paint below the waterline. This is a copper-based ablative hole protection paint that will hopefully prohibit the growth of marine life on my pontoons. Above the waterline, I'm using white rust-oleum topside paint. I used an anti-skid powder between the first and second layers of topside paint to give a bit of grip on the nose cone step. Now that I have two semi-matching pontoons, the next step will be to make fiberglass deck boards to bridge them. One final note on the use of shower curtains for drop cloths. The solid plastic ones work great, but woven plastic cloth shower curtains sometimes allow epoxy resin to flow through them, leaving epoxy and plastic cloth stuck to your garage floor. You definitely need a P100 respirator when grinding fiberglass and concrete, as you don't want to be breathing the concrete dust.